Windows 11 is coming and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up a test environment so that you can start playing with Windows 11 before it's released to the general public. Now we do not want to do that in our production environment, we want to do that in a virtual sandbox and that's what I'm going to show you how to do right now. There are going to be three steps that we need to take and that's going to make this a little bit of a longer video. So I'll put chapter markers down below if you want to skip from one section to another or watch the whole video from beginning to end and you'll have a sandbox environment with Windows 11 that you can start playing with. Step one, we need to get Windows 11. It's easy to do, but we have to join the Microsoft Windows Insider program. Let's look at joining that program right now. To get ready for Windows 11, we're going to join the Windows Insider program. To do that, if I just open up a browser and I go into insider.windows.com, I'm going to be able to go in and register to be part of the Insider program. Now, in my case, I've already registered for the program, so I just need to sign in. Once you've signed in, you've filled in your registration information, you can now start taking a look at some of the different things that you need to do. Specifically, we need to make sure that our system meets the minimum requirements, and we want to make sure that we've put the proper updates and security into our operating system. We're going to hold off for that right now, because what we want to do is first create a Windows 10 virtual machine, then we're going to turn it into a Windows 11 virtual machine. For step number two, we want to create the environment, the virtual environment for Windows 11 to live in. And we're going to do that through Microsoft's Hyper-V, which is available for free. Let's set up Hyper-V right now. So if I go into Windows features and turn them on and off, one of the features I can turn on is Hyper-V. You'll notice that I've already checked both the platform and the management tools. In Hyper-V, the platform runs the virtual machines and the management tools are used to create and manage the virtual machines. I need both of them because I want to run everything on this particular computer. So I've already checked them and I'll say OK. If you haven't installed them, you'll have to restart your system, but it'll allow you then to go in and create virtual machines. Okay, so now it's time for step three, where we actually set up Windows 11 in our Hyper-V environment so that we can start playing around with it. We can then install programs, we can play around with different features, and we can get familiar with it so that when it's released, we're ready to start using it at work and in our classrooms. Once I've installed them and restarted my system, I'll now go into Hyper-V Manager, and this will allow me to create a virtual machine. Notice that I don't currently have any virtual machines here. So what I'm going to do is go into new and I'm going to create a new virtual machine. It's going to ask me a few questions. So first of all, it's going to ask me, what do you want to call this virtual machine? I'm going to convert this into a Windows 11 development machine. And I'm going to go in here and choose the default location in this case. I'll, I'll leave it there. And I'll go in, it's going to ask me what generation I want. I'm going to use a generation 2. That gives me the UEFI based firmware and it allows me to have a 64-bit operating system. I'm going to say next. I want to increase the amount of RAM. So I'm going to have 8 gigs of RAM because my machine here has 16 gigs of RAM. So when I have the virtual machine, I'm going to allow it to have 8 gigs of RAM and I'm going to give it a static 8 gigs as opposed to using dynamic memory. Now in terms of my networking, I'm just going to use the default switch. And when it comes to where I'm going to store it, I'm going to store it in this Documents Hyper-V folder. I'm going to maximum of 127 gigs. I'm going to go in, say next, and I'm going to install an operating system by using an image file, an ISO file. I've already downloaded a copy of Windows 10, so if I go to my downloads, I have the insider preview for a 64-bit Windows 10 and I'll say next to this. You'll see that it gives me a summary and now it's going to create this virtual machine for me. It's not very exciting because by default the virtual machine is in the off state so I'm going to click on that virtual machine. I'm going to connect to it to bring out a management window. This management window will allow me to start this virtual machine and begin the install process. I'll just start the install process taking the defaults here and we'll begin the process of creating a Windows 10 virtual machine. Now it will ask me for an activation key and I'm going to use one from my developer account in order to start this virtual machine and activate it. So if you don't have a developer key, if you're a student or an instructor, you can go to Azure for Education and there's Windows 10 keys there. So I'll go into next here and I'm going to do a custom installation of Windows. I'm going to choose the 127 gigabyte unallocated space and I'm going to install there. 
Now as I go through and do the Windows 10 setup in the virtual machine, I really want to make sure that it's set up for personal use so that I don't inherit any security restrictions that my organization may have. I then want to use the exact same email address that I used when I signed up for the Insider program. I've made a number of selections, but I also want to make sure that I include all optional diagnostic data so that I can provide feedback to Microsoft on how Windows 11 is working for me, including things like inking and typing. Now I have my Windows 10 machine installed as a virtual machine and I'm going to go into settings. Underneath settings, I'm going to go into updates at the bottom here, updates and security. And underneath updates and security, I'm going to go to my Windows Insider program. Underneath the Windows Insider program, I'm going to put in the account that I use to sign up for the Windows Insider program. We're going to link that account to this virtual machine. There's so a couple things. Now, one of the things you do want to make sure we do is underneath the Hyper-V Manager, you want to go into your settings and you want to make sure, if we go into our settings, that the Trusted Platform module is enabled. So underneath Security, you want to make sure that TPM is enabled. You notice that this is grayed out because the machine is running. So if for some reason your Trusted Platform module is not checked, you'll need to turn off the virtual machine and then check the Enable Trusted Platform module and then turn it back on. Underneath the Windows Insider program, you'll go in and you'll notice that you have the dev channel here. So I'm currently in the dev channel. You'll need to be either in the dev or the beta channel in order for Windows 11 to be working. So if you if it's saying you're in the release channel, you just click on here and you would choose the appropriate channel that you want here. And you'll notice here that Windows 11 Insider Preview is now downloading and I'm going to get the security downloads first and then the Windows 11 will download. Let's just wait for that to happen. I went ahead and restarted the system in order to get some of the other updates for Windows 10 first and you can see now that I've gone back to Windows Updates and Windows 11 Insider Preview is now installing. So let's restart. Let's see what happens with Windows 11. The installation's complete and we're restarting. We have updates underway. It'll take a few moments. We should have our system plugged in when we do this. Make sure that it's not on battery power and when it restarts we'll have Windows 11. So let's log into our computer. So we're going to go in here and we're going to put in our super secret pin. And here we are. We have Windows 11. We're ready to go. We can start playing around with the operating system. There's a neat little feature here called getting started. It'll go through and walk us through some of the main features of Windows 11 and we can start becoming proficient at it. So now we have this great Windows 11 environment that we can start learning the operating system in and playing around with all of the various features, which I'll make videos on. So subscribe and like, and we'll see you in the next video.